Hey guys, this is TTB and we're playing Escape from Tarkov again. I was playing a little bit off stream just for myself, just to have a little bit of fun a couple of days ago. And as you guys know, we currently have the pre-vibe event going on. So basically what this means is that on any given map, you have a very high chance of encountering very sweaty, very good equipped dudes that most likely will have uh, thermals, so either Fleers or Reaper IRs in this case. And uh, of course, uh, if you want to fight them, well, you need to level the playing field and that means bringing one of these bad boys yourself. Now I had some really good matches with this and I'm gonna share two of which uh, of them with you guys and I'm gonna try to explain what I was thinking, what I was doing and I hopefully can give you guys some insight of how to play with these and also how to play against them. Well, as you can see we have been scanning for some Amonis quite a bit here on the good map of Shoreline and uh, I'm just looking around trying to see it, looking towards the station and whatnot. I just saw some white blip on my Reaper AI. I just didn't notice it at the time but it's all okay. Apparently I'm still enjoying the nature walk right here and then we get shot in the face I mean we just lost our stomach we just got shot in the face first reaction of course is to throw a grenade in the general direction of where the shot came from and then we are going to heal up pretty quickly uh, luckily actually we're healing our head here which is very good um, so it's actually not that bad that our stomach got shot out now we have to do a long flank back towards safety right now to go ahead find a safe spot and actually fix our stomach that is important because we don't want to run out of uh, hydration or out of energy and then uh, slowly die that would be really really bad especially if the match goes very long so now as you can see and I'm also just speeding through the longer passages but nothing is happening guys so that you guys don't get bored but I want to let you guys like see my whole movement see my the whole areas where I walk through where I'm looking so um, it might be a little bit disoriented to some people but I think it's really really important that you guys see the full match and not just bits of it because otherwise you don't understand why I'm in certain positions at certain times in the match now as you can see I'm going for a very very long flank I don't know where this guy is that attacked me he must have shot me from pretty up close and I'm actually happy that I'm alive. Uh, helmet saved me there, face shield saved me there by the way. But uh, yeah, so trying to find him, trying to sk uh, skid around here, looking at the um, weather station, also looking at the radar tower over there, but I can't really find any targets. So all this time I'm running, I'm healing up, I'm running, I'm healing up, and I'm just trying to get a little bit closer to the uh, station up there. And now we have some targets up on top of the hill there. I don't know if that's, this is the same guy that was engaging me or whatnot, but uh, there's definitely something up there. So I'm trying to see if I can get maybe a better angle on this guy. And I hear shooting. So I know there's at least two dudes up there now and they don't like each other. That is very good. So we can use the cover of those shots to move in closer. I'm always at the time scanning my area left and right all around me. The thing is with the Reaper IR, it can lead to a false sense of security because you're looking around and if you don't see anything, that doesn't mean there's nothing there, guys. It just means you can't see anything there at the moment. Somebody could be behind several trees. Somebody could be behind a boulder. Somebody could be behind a rise or in a ditch. Um, so don't take what you see through a thermal for granted. The situation can change in seconds. Now, as you can see, we're moving towards the back of the station right here, just to try and see uh, if we find anything here at weather station. Nothing here. I'm just cresting the hill, making sure that uh, my angles are covered and making sure I move slowly. I'm not running very much here because I want to make sure that uh, I don't get hurt. I saw a guy just come down the outside rafters and I saw a dead scab over there. So I'm uh, expecting him to go outside the door and uh, that that is where I want to go ahead and catch him. So we're going to go prone here in the middle, aim for the door and uh, hopefully see him through the grass. And there he comes. And there he goes. That is a dead dude. Two more rounds in there just to make sure that he's actually dead. All right. Well, now we can loot our stuff, right? Yeah, maybe not. Maybe we get shot at. And that means there's another dude shooting at us. From the sound of the shots, I can basically said that he's outside, but I couldn't really see him. I, I think he's like over there at the truck. Um, I shot the... Okay, here we go. Shot the dead uh, scav on the ground, and he just ran into the kitchen area. Okay, let's keep on moving. Let's see if we can actually spot him by any chance. It's gonna be hard, though. Um, maybe move a little bit closer. And then we hear that sound. And that's a grenade dropping next to us, and another grenade dropping next to us. So, okay. Apparently, he does not want to come out at this point, so we are going to, of course, switch our position. It makes no sense, guys, to keep one position and hold that forever, so you want to make sure that you then attack from an angle that the enemy doesn't expect. In my case, I'm just trying to get around the building right here, just trying to see what's going on, if I can spot him through a window. Listen. Somebody stood up. 
went outside, went on metal, and just went prone. So, I know he's outside, I, I know he just went prone, so uh, let's get a little bit closer. That's the reason, guys, why you have an active headset on your head. And this could be him, because this is not a body that I recognize seeing, and I heard somebody go prone. Oh, and he's dead now. Was that sportsmanlike? No. But let me ask you another question, guys. Is it sportsmanlike to unknowingly walk past that bush and get murked? Well, then. The important thing is we killed our target. Now we go ahead, we uh, repack our big magazine, and then we will go ahead and get on closer. The weapon that we're using is an M1A, 50-round mag, plus a couple of 30-round mags, slick body armor, of course. Uh, I think I have a sword pack of swordants or a uh, Comstar or whatever. It, it doesn't really matter what kind of active headset you have on. It's just your preference. Exfil helmet with a face shield, and that is it. Now we're looting our first kill. There's nothing on the kill right now, so that tells me that his, this guy here looted his buddy. So uh, let's go ahead, another quick preliminary scan, and here we go. Let's go looting. Uh, there we go, there's the one dock tag. There's an AKM that we can loot, another AK that we can loot, or grab the ammo off, let's see. Okay, armor is garbage, unfortunately, but that's okay. We can grab the helmet. And uh, maybe insurance for the contacts, maybe check the, get the other helmet. I'm not gonna get the armor here, even though it's nice, uh, it would be nice pre-wipe or post-wipe, early post-wipe. Uh, the problem is that we can't really do much with that, and the PP ammo is just not worth it. Okay, well then, we can just leave the rest of the stuff. Um, just checking the magazine here, same thing, also crap ammo, so I'm just gonna drop it, so I don't weigh 10 tons. And we're already at 46 kilograms, so we're already pushing it a little bit. Okay, that is two dudes down. And, um, yeah, we will just continue on our merry way once we go ahead and uh, loot the tactical rig from this guy. As you can see, the ammo that I'm using is mainly M61, but I also have cheap M80 rounds to use if I run out of M61. That's not a problem. M80 works very well, too. Uh, the only problem that you get with M80 is if you go up against people that have class 6 uh, body armor. That way, you, you will need a couple more shots, but that's okay. I'm trying to uh, eat the herring here, just to make sure that we have our energy up top. Uh, hydration is at 46, uh, so I don't know. We might need to keep that a little bit in check. But that's all right. I'm also gonna go ahead and rip off the uh, hand grips as well as the uh, muzzles and uh, the um, optics from these guns right here. So if I have to, I can just drop these AKs if I find something better. A uh, little bit of a shot in the face is a little bit disorienting, of course. You have that big crack in your windshield, but uh, that's okay. I mean, better have that crack in your windshield than have a crack in your skull because that is a one shot. I'm just trying to check uh, over here to the side again, try to see if we can find any targets that we can engage. Let's see what we can do here. Movement down low. Heard some steps. There we go, there's a target. Slightly juicy looking player. He's running. He's not running anymore. Always make sure that your target's dead. So if you don't hear a death yell or a death grunt, uh, be very careful. That's just a burning... Um, burning little uh, barrel over there. And I'm just trying to see what... Oh, we got some targets up front. Maybe. Unclear right now. Huh, well, that's our third guy that we murked this time. Let's uh, see, okay, sniper scav is set up. I just checked over to the right hand side towards power station, and now we'll keep down looking towards the uh, area down there. Ah, okay, I see targets moving. That's towards gas station here on shoreline. And um, there's movement, let's get a little bit closer, get start aiming. These guys are moving slow, and they seem to know something. And I just got shot at. So let's go ahead, get some range, uh, runs down range. Uh, we just lost our arm, that's uh, a little bit painful. Now we just also lost our leg, and of course at the same time the painkiller ran out, so it's just a little bit danger with Robinson zone. Although I have to say, I was on target for three hits, so the guy I was shooting at should be dead. By our rights, he should be dead, but he isn't. So, there's no reason to cry over spilled milk. Uh, we now know that we're engaging at least two dudes down there, uh, potentially three. So let's go ahead and uh, repair up here. I'm thinking that they won't push me very fast because they know I've got a high-powered weapon and they also have to, some healing of themselves to do. So I'm just trying, once again, trying to require my targets. I don't see anything, so I'm pretty sure they pushed towards the site where I was actually located at. So I'm using this time to do some more field surgery, um, go ahead, heal up, uh, ammunition up my ammo drum and uh, let's see yeah we're gonna go for a little bit of a ride here once again we go for a little rotation uh, it's really important guys that you be unpredictable and the best thing that you can do right here is remove yourself from the fight I don't want to go to the shore side because that is low ground you want to try and keep the high ground if possible 
So we're fighting for this side. As you can see, I'm doing a wide rotation over towards the power station. There is the body that we just killed under the bridge here with the secret stash. If you are interested, by the way, in all the secret stashes on Shoreline, I've got a guide on this YouTube channel, all 37 secret stashes on Shoreline, um, to dumping it two more shots into the body just to make sure this guy is dead. But yeah, I can't see anybody around here. Nothing that can be visually acquired. So um, there's three options right now. They either moved over back to where I spawned, they could have moved um, up top, or they could have moved towards gas station. I didn't see anybody towards gas station, so I'm assuming right now that they're up top, and I'm slowly making my way towards the guy I killed, tried to loot him, and then uh, basically move on from over there. Now the problem is, I forgot exactly where I killed the guy, so I had to move back, reacquire my target, make sure that I get a lock on it. There we go, just found it. Um, yeah, here we go. And now we just go ahead, move towards the corpse, and loot that. As you can see, this takes quite a bit of time, guys, but if, if you hurry this up too much, you might actually get killed. So uh, one thing I learned in Tarkov is it sometimes it's really, really important to be fast, and sometimes it's really important to <laughs> take it slow. And by the way, there was a player scav, so, but still the third player we killed. Uh, you can tell if it's a player scav or a normal AI scav by the fact that he had a pouch slot. If it has a pouch slot, it is always a player scav. Now then, uh, let's keep on moving. I haven't seen anything up on the cliffs, so they might be over towards the over look side looking towards the uh, tower over there on the hill but uh, we don't know so we just keep moving we just keep looking we just keep scanning the thing is though we need to have enough distance from the plateau so that if we run that they can't hear us easily because uh, if they can hear me they can acquire me they have the high ground right now i do have a lot of trees here so that's a good thing um especially trees stacked up against each other are very good cover from uh, reaper ir oh i'm getting fired upon okay all right all right uh, let's go ahead and try and heal up maybe. Uh, also the painkiller is out, that's also really really bad timing again. Uh, let's try and get over this little ridge right here. Try and see if we can heal up. Oh my god, there goes the stomach again. Damn it, I just fixed that thing and I'm also out of stamina. Luckily for me though, the other guy apparently isn't the best shot in the world, so let's go ahead. Run to cover, get our nose down into the dirt and um, you know the game that follows. It's a game that everybody likes to play in Tarkov. It's called Operation. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to heal up again. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be angry at myself that I didn't anticipate these guys still being up top and clear top first before I went bottom. But that's okay. Maybe I just uh, avoided being murked by two or three guys up there. So you never know. Let's uh, look up there and see what we can see. Oh, there we go. I see two targets. Uh, but also scavs are moving towards me from the back, which is, of course, the, uh, the dream happening for every Tarkov player. Scavs from front, uh, scavs from back, and players from front. Okay, that scav is dead. That scav is in cover, so hopefully he will not engage me. Let's uh, look up topside again. I see one dude moving. Let's wait for him to resurface. I just saw his face. Get a couple of rounds down range to him. Uh, didn't kill him, I think. I'm fairly sure there's two dudes up there. So let's move around. Let's find a different position to shoot from and uh, see if we can shoot again. And by the way, guys, I can tell you this right now, all these guys have Reaper IRs, so this is a very level playing field. Uh, the only thing that's not level is that I'm fighting 1v unknown number of players right now. I know it's at least two. So, uh, let's see, we go behind Hardcover. Hardcover, of course, blocks the uh, IR, so they can't know where I'm at. So I keep them guessing. Let's reapply some Battle Bomb, make sure we're well lubricated. And then have another look up top, see what we can see. Okay, nothing to the the right side. Oh, here we go, an attack reacquired. I see two white blips, so we have at least two guys downrange here. Um, but I'm starting to get a little bit annoyed right now, because I don't seem to be hitting my shots, and uh, these guys don't seem to really want to move. So, I'm making a decision right now, and the decision is, uh, if you watch my Mech Warrior stuff, you guys know that I'm a very aggressive player, so I will go ahead and... Uh, if you don't come to me, I will come to you. So, uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of dodging here in between the trees and in between those little uh, dips in the land. And we just, just keep running, we just keep running. Use trees as much as possible to our cover. Uh, maybe throw another round down range. And keep on going. Let's see what happens. I just heard shots further from the left, so I'm thinking there's a guy further down low maybe. Didn't see him right now. Let's try to get onto these rocks right here. Come on. Now we're doing rock surfing now. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Oh, down there. Okay. So we've got one guy down. That means I can basically say there's one guy up top still. 
uh, trying to jump up here. Unfortunately, I slid down and almost broke my legs. And the Twitch viewers, the regular Twitch viewers, know that uh, breaking my legs is kind of a fetish of mine in this game. But um, luckily, the fetish was not fulfilled this time. So we keep on moving, we keep on healing. I want to deal with the guy top side first because if I deal with the guy on the bottom side first, uh, the guy on top is gonna engage me. So let's go top side and see what happens. Mm, nothing on scope so far, but remember what I said about rocks and whatnot. Yep, oh, there we go. This time, nothing left to chance. We just do a lot of rounds into this poor dude, and he drops. Okay, that's guy on top dead. So now we have to deal with the guy down low. He's sprinting down low, so he's probably trying to cut me off or coming behind me. Uh, he's jumping around. He's going to be on the rocks down here. Uh, I was actually thinking he might run up the rocks here because he can't run up here, but shh, it's going to be a secret. Uh, hit him twice, I think, and killed him with my last round in the mag. <laughs> okay, he uh, seems to be dead. Uh, yeah, he's definitely dead. Okay. Okay, let's see what we can do now. Oh, white blip. Grenade coming in. That is another one, Monet. Let's just go ahead and murk this guy. Rest in pepperoni. Got him with a full salvo. Use the uh, knockback from the weapon or use the little muzzle rise from the weapon to take him down. And now it is just a question of looting and scooting. As you can see, by the way, guys, my energy uh, is still fine. But in terms of hydration, we are at zero. We are constantly losing health. And while I'm doing this, I basically have to constantly heal to uh, in order to not die. Now, the smart thing here is to quickly check all these guys and, make, and, and basically see what they have. As you can see, now we're carrying two Reaper RRs. We're carrying three Reaper RRs in total. Uh, we also <laughs> have an Exfil helmet and another Slick, as well as the Slick that I just take off the other guys. So we're having uh, currently three Exfils and two Slicks. Uh, I think I dropped one of the X-Fill helmets because I just couldn't carry it. I, I wanted to grab the M1A instead. And uh, now we also have to go ahead, run down hillside, grab this other guy's stuff, and yeah, now we have to extract. So currently, aside from my own stuff, I am carrying three Reaper IRs, uh, two or three, two, three actually new slicks, <laughs> and um, well, <laughs> a couple of other stuff I'll show you at the end of the video. So as you can see, the timer is ticking down. This is 700% increased speed, so you guys don't uh, fall asleep on me. But as you can see, it is going to be a very close call. I had to drop the guns, actually just stripped off the attachments, in order to have enough energy left to run as fast as possible. I also was able to get some water off the corpse, so uh, that helped here as well. But <laughs> yeah, this is how it looks like. The glory of the weight system. The funny thing is, the weight system actually punishes solo players most if they're effective against teams, because you can't check most of their stuff. However, uh, this time we got out with a nice load of loot, and with about 30 seconds remaining. Nice fight. Three slicks, and lots and lots of good stuff. We murked a total of five PMCs plus a player scav, so that was a nice, nice round. And of course, as I said, let's have a quick look at the loot page as well. Three slicks, the one I'm wearing is the one I took off of one of these guys. Uh, two exfil helmets and a total of three repair RRs plus some other stuff. So I would say that was a nice, nice and juicy, juicy endeavor that I will always look back on fondly. Now, jumping into the next match here, we're starting very early, once again on shoreline, on the eastern side of the map, towards the uh, weather station. And um, let's go on and try and see if we can find some targets that we can go ahead and engage. And um, I'm gonna try to use high ground, but also to try to use some central ground. So I put myself basically in the middle between potential targets and myself, and uh, that should allow me to do some good damage here. And we can also always enjoy those beautiful sunrises here in Escape from Tarkov. Yep. And this is the life of the thermal player. You're basically a lighthouse. And to be fair, guys, oh, by the way, explosion towards the uh, resort already, so we know that there's guys in the northern spawn. I'm um, just trying to see if I find somebody here. Oh, there's somebody running. And actually shooting at me, but it uh, didn't help him much. He's dead. Uh, always before you run towards a kill, guys, always make sure that you clear the area as much as possible, as much as it's safe, and uh, don't rush in there to just greed for the loot. 
especially if you don't have a suppressed weapon or you just made a lot of noise because uh, that could be fatal. Well, that was just a pistoling. I don't imagine pistol running at this time uh, where basically everything is gonna get wiped. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. We will just go ahead and continue on towards the weather station once again because that is a hot spot on this map um, if you're interested for example there can be a graphics card spawn up top in the building there's a safe in there and some other little loose loot that you can grab it's a nice location to hit every time you play on shoreline and you have the, the early spawn over on the side now this plateau that the weather station is on actually governs a lot of the eastern part of the map. So once again, we'll just move in, we'll find a nice shady spot, and we'll try to engage the enemy from there. And uh, as you can see, it's really important, once again, making sure that we check every corner. This early in the raid, though, I mean, it should be fine. I don't expect to see a lot of targets here, but uh, we'll have to see what we can find. You never know what you get. That's the beauty of Escape from Tarkov. Oh, there we go. That's a PMC. And uh, that's CTB not hitting very well. He just went prone. Now he's dead, I think. Oh, did I just see something behind that? There's something behind that tree, right? Hello? Tree dude? Uh, where did he move? Okay, this is a dicey situation right now. The right thing to do right now would have been to run because we just got hit in the side with an SVD and that one hurt through the arm and into the chest. If I didn't have the slick on, this would have probably been a one-hit kill. So, uh, I consider myself lucky. We uh, go ahead, put some more ammo into our drum, we stay up top as always and we just go ahead and make sure that we are topped up, our health is topped and uh, we just wait and try and reacquire our target. The thing is though, I don't see anything. This guy is basically a ghost, and even though I keep eyes on the corpse of at all times, um, he doesn't seem to want to push me. I have no idea where he's currently at, so uh, we will just go ahead and try to play the plateau, uh, always making sure that we check our backside, check around everywhere to make sure that he's not sneaking in on us, but uh, at some point I will have to go down there and make a decision to loot. Before you do that, guys, though, make sure you have some painkillers going. Always make, If you're expecting to fight, guys, always make sure you have painkillers running. That way, if you get engaged upon, um, and especially if you get shot in the legs or the stomach or whatnot, you can actually run away. Uh, if you don't have painkillers running at that point, you are very, very slow and you are an easy kill to pick off for anybody. And as you can see, this is, again, 700% speed. Uh, while I'm talking here, there's a lot of time passing by. So we're really taking our time here. We're making sure that uh, we don't rush crazily into anything. But it's right about now then that uh, I see something happening. I saw a scav behind me and that scav is a good thing because it is an alarm. See what I mean? Somebody just shot the scav and from the sound it sounds a little bit dull, that means the shots came from inside this building. So, once again, we've got a dude in there probably looting, and uh, once again, we're going to go ahead, hold position, try and see if we can spot him, and uh, if we can engage him, then that's perfect. If we can engage him without him noticing, even better. So let's go ahead and wait. Uh, be careful when you're waiting around these uh, tree trunks. If you don't have enough distance, your shots might get caught, and I think you will see an example of that uh, very quickly right here. So, he should be coming out the door any second. There he comes. Let's go ahead, engage. That should have been an instant headshot. That should have been a headshot. That should have been arm shots. As you can see, guys, I just pumped like five, six rounds to him. Just doesn't care. Maybe desync. I don't know. But uh, he's dead now. So, problem solved, I guess. Even though that kill cost is probably a lot more than this loot is actually going to be worth. Uh, I'm happy to find a Vapor Hunter, though. We'll put that to good use. We like to do a lot of Vapor Hunter runs on the live stream. We find some food, some more rounds. I can check his uh, mags for more M80 rounds if I need them. We can take the Sprat off here with the um, little flashlight. And, uh, yeah, well... Not not bad, not bad. I mean, it's just a little bit of cash. Honestly, if I know the guy is low geared, I might have just even let him live at this point if he doesn't know I'm here. But I have to expect that he's going to engage me and shoot me. And uh, I want to survive a little bit. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. There's, okay, I think, scavs down there. And, uh, yep. Did you see what I just saw? I didn't see the guy. He was just out there in the open. And I didn't see him. 
That is SVD guy again. That's the friend of the guy that we killed in the beginning of the match. He just took away both my arms. So, once again, defensive mechanism, we throw a grenade or two, and we fall back, and we try and find him. But, unfortunately, I can't see him anymore. He's like a ghost. He's vanished. So, um, the smart thing to do right now is to heal up, and we are using a little bit of a ditch here, just to get our arms back. Uh, arms are very important for having the ability to aim properly. And the thing is, uh, if people don't know these spots, they will assume that you've gone, that you've run far away, so you can make good use of that. And once again, the rotation begins for the nth time today. We run around in a circle, because that is the best thing that you can do. Uh, you don't want to run head first into an SVD. Um, chances are he's got better ammunition than you, uh, even if you go using M61. I mean, you're just basically on, on, on even terms, right? But yeah, you don't want to underestimate SVDs. So, I just did a full rotation almost. I haven't seen the guy so far. I have to assume that he's either moved on or he might still be around here somewhere. Which is a problem, but uh, something that we can deal with if we play slow enough. And if we use our ears. Oh, that was loud. That was not a good move. A little bit of tree rustling. Oh, to our right. There we go, target acquired. Those rounds weren't good, I think I just got in one shot or so. Let's uh, go ahead, fall back a little bit, throw a grenade maybe, and then go in for the kill as the grenade flies. Here's the grenade. He should be running. No, he's not running. Okay, never mind then. In this case, we will be spraying him and we finally took him down. That 100% was the guy with the SVD. So um, that two-man team has now been neutralized. Once again, we're doing our homework, we're checking the area, and after we've done that, then we can go ahead and uh, enjoy some nice, juicy loot. And by the way, guys, when you're seeing this video, <laughs> go ahead and uh, use up your rubles, use up your gear. The wipe is uh, going to be coming very, very soon. Raiders have spawned on all the maps today on livestream. It was insane. Um, so, make sure you use that stuff before you lose it at some point, right? Because we, we're all gonna lose all our stuff in the wipe, so make use of that stuff. If you have thermals, use the thermals. If you have big-ass guns and ammo, use them. Have fun with them. Enjoy them. It's a game. Play it. Alright, so we grabbed this SVD. I didn't think I need anything else from him. Uh, the Comtex have been insurance for it, of course. I'm gonna have a can of Tushonka. And then we will continue moving on, maybe towards weather state, uh, or maybe towards the power station here, or maybe towards the gas station. A little sip of water to oil my voice. And uh, oh, by the way, I almost forgot. We still have to loot this guy down here. Yep, he's been lying here all alone. He's starting to reek a little bit, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and grab his stuff. What do we get here? Ooh, a nice big backpack and. An SA-58 with a FLIR attached, plus a killer armor. Those are some nice finds. There's also a ULAC helmet. All in all, really, really fun stuff to find. Really good stuff that we can definitely, definitely use. Let's uh, grab the killer armor right here. And we should also be able to grab the ULAC helmet. Very important, very valuable. I want to try and grab his backpack. Perfect. You can also grab the IFAC and his pills. And uh, afterwards, we'll check his backpack. Ooh, nice. Three drum mags. Yeah, we'll take those as well. Beautiful. Uh, he's also got sword and seer, but I don't want to lie around in this area forever. So let's move towards some cover. And then maybe f further sort out the loot if we have to. And I'm thinking right now that a good place of action would be to just go towards the boat and use that to extract. Because as you can see, we're already quite fat again. And uh, huffing and puffing, so... Oh, there's a scarf moving along the leg side, just trying to scan if I see any targets, but looks like we're good right now. So, let's go prone, nothing here. Okay, let's check the backpack here. 65 kilograms once again. Um, got the SA-58, we've got the ULAC, we've got the armor. Everything is good. By the way, you can put a FLIR into your secure container. You can't put your Reaper IR in there, but the FLIR, if it's on top of something like this uh, this rail, you can just put it uh, into your secured container. So that's a nice 150k worth or so that you can bring home with you. Now, as you can see, I'm just slowly moving in, um, using my sprint to get in there. If I wanted to, I can just use my Red Rebel, but um, yeah, I'm, I've decided to not actually risk the boat at this point. Um, I just will go ahead and go for normal extraction. And uh, while we're doing so, as always, using the Red Rebel or a pistol, if you have it, to sprint a little bit faster. It works even if you're overweight, so keep that in mind, guys. It's 
a nice little thing that you can do. And uh, we will just keep moving on towards the extraction. Um, scavs might shoot you actually uh, if you're doing this on the shoreline here, but you know what? I was fairly confident there were no people over between me and over there, so we can just go ahead and rush towards the extract. Maybe merc another scav or two on the island, just because we can get those score points up a little bit higher. And there we go, we extract another set of two two-man teams dead. And don't be fooled by the levels, guys. Uh, if, they got, if people run specific equipment, you can assume they just reset their account at some point. So don't feel bad killing a level 10 player if he's got big Chad Reaper IR gear. That's a nice haul. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you guys to understand a little bit of my decision-making processes. But uh, hey, you know what? I'm not a perfect player, so if I if I made mistakes, if I should have played situations differently, uh, let me know in the comments down below. And other than that, I would love to see you on my live stream at twitch.tv slash therealttb. Say hi!